Hey, thanks for checking back. This is Skylar Farley, your Charlotte 49ers women's basketball strength coach. Today you're going to be looking at day three. We're going to have some agility work, some on-court stuff, some movement training, and we're going to go in the weight room for another lower body lift. Okay, so starting off, you're going to notice that we're using the PVC pipe today just to address some different mobility issues before we get into our more specific warm-up. Once we get into the specific warm-up, you'll notice that we're doing some very low-level plyometrics, just cueing a correctly applying force, making sure that we're striking with the balls of our feet, that we're keeping a soft knee. Again, eyes up, chest up, lots of common themes. Now that we're getting towards the end of the week, you're going to hear me saying the same stuff over and over again. But again, I'm trying to make those athletes' life simpler by giving them common cues Throughout the week, no need to overcomplicate something that doesn't need to be complicated. As we're moving on, you're going to notice that we're doing a little bit of core training at the beginning. We're doing some stuff that's going to focus on rigidity through the core, which is going to be really important since we've got an agility emphasis today. I want to make sure that when we're cutting and changing directions that we're holding on to that rigidity through the core and we're not leaking energy. We're going to move on from that to our seated box jump. I addressed that in day two and why that's so important about overcoming inertia. You're going to notice that we're resisted at the hips this time. I like to cue the girls all the time to picture that there's a piston driving underneath the box or a fist that's going to drive up right underneath their hips. We're throwing tennis balls at them so there's more of a reactive component. And I want to make sure that they're jumping straight up, that they're not allowing the butt to come back and their chest to drop because we've got to make sure that when we sit back and we release the hips, we create motion and we drive straight up. Go get the ball, finish tall, nice soft landing, reset yourself and be ready to go get it again. To get into a little bit of the detail of what you're going to see in our movement training today, you're going to notice that we start with very, very simple drills. Basketball is a game of the first step. You've got to be both powerful in the first step but also efficient. So if we have false steps, if we're striking our foot in the wrong spot, if we're leaking energy anywhere, it's ultimately going to translate to poor movement quality. And really plays an acceleration. When I break down change of direction, there's three components in the simplest possible form. So I look at acceleration, I'm looking at deceleration, and reacceleration. But the common theme in all three of those things is to reset neutral. So I've never seen somebody get hurt in athletic stance. So that's the position that we train out of, but it's also the most efficient place to come out of. So ultimately in sport, in the constantly changing dynamic environment, you're going to get thrown out of position, but every time that you can reset neutral and get back to that athletic stance, you're going to be in position, one, to not get hurt, but also to correctly apply force and get where you need to go efficiently and with sufficient speed. As we move forward in our movement training, you're going to notice that we start to add a reactive component. We're doing some shadow drills, some stuff that's going to allow the girls to have a little bit of fun. Based on this time of year, we're only really training in two directions. We're going forward, backwards, and left and right. So we're working on our slides. All I'm really looking at is the footwork. The results take care of themselves when you properly lay the foundation through proper footwork and efficiency. Once we get into the weight room, again, common themes, we're going to be working that snatch sequence. This time we're doing it with an unloaded barbell. This is still just carrying on some of the stuff from our warm up. You're going to notice that I'm cueing again that sequence triple extension through the ankles, knees, and hips. Finish tall. Make sure that we're getting some good speed on the bar. We're going to go from that into our speed squats on a box. We're using the box to re ingrain technique, make sure that we're hitting a minimal level of depth. But again, it's all about overcoming inertia. So same common theme. There it is again. I'm sitting back to the box. I release the hips. I drive off, I stay tight, the loads are around 50 to 60% just based on the time of the year that we're in. We're going to get our primary strength work today not from the squat but from the deadlift so that squat's almost going to serve as a prime for our primary strength movement being the deadlift. Once we get into the deadlift, since we're in the third week, we're hitting triples across multiple sets. The girls will finish fairly heavy today but again, we haven't spent a whole lot of time doing the deadlift in season so I want to make sure that the technique is there, that they're staying tight and that they're keeping that bar nice and close to their body. We're going to finish with some general accessory work, making sure that we're strengthening all the supporting structure and again adding hypertrophy where it's needed. You'll see some unilateral exercises, of course, we're always going to strengthen the posterior chain and a little bit of abdominal strengthening. Okay, we're not done yet. We've got one more day of training this week, so be sure to check back tomorrow. Hope you took something away from today. Thanks for your time and stay strong.